Hi all, everything in my video is pulled from the public domain and I am using them under the Fair Use Fair Dealings Guidelines. Everything I say is my own opinion. You should look into this information for yourselves, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Good morning, everybody. All right, I have another super long video. Really, I try not to make them this long because I feel that if it's really long, then people like disengage and not listen. So I try to make them shorter, but it's just not working. We have, again, updates to several stories. Plus, we're going to look at William's wreath laying ceremony that took place. And then we're going back to the tour with Sophie and Edward. So let's get busy. So we're back to looking at Netflix again. You know, apparently what's happening here is competition from other streaming rivals began to take its toll on Netflix. And while Netflix ran up huge bills over the last several years as it, as it expanded, they, they have to reel it in, if that makes any sense, because now they're in serious trouble. Now, since the last time I reported this, shares have now plunged 35% which is the second worst one-day decline ever and has erased $54 billion in market value. My goodness. So last year, they added over 500 new programs. So this year, they're going to add fewer titles with, as they said, a greater emphasis on quality, says the people that are familiar with their strategy. It's, they're going to revamp production and they're going to be very careful with their future deals. They're going to base them on risk and prioritizing programs with the biggest return, not the greatest reach. And they're going to try to re-budget things. I don't know how well that's going to work. So in order to fix the problem, there's several things they're going to do. Okay. They're going to look at new ways to boost revenue. So the first thing is they're increasing prices. Now, several people have written to me and told me that when they went to cancel, Netflix offered them to drop the price to $10.99 and they said, no, thank you, because you're, you're dealing with Harry and Meghan, we're not interested. They're looking at adding um, ad-supported versions. So in other words, you have to start watching ads like everybody else. They're looking to say, listen, you can share passwords, but you have to monetize that practice so that you make money. They're going to make money if you share your password with somebody. Now, I have a really good suggestion for them. I seriously do. Why don't you look at the deals you have with some of the people that are coming up with content for you, the ones that are worth hundreds of millions of dollars, and the fact that they haven't really produced anything, and why don't you cut those programs? Hmm. Okay, so if you didn't catch everything I said, here's the deal. They're going to try to fix the problem by allowing people to have a lower price subscription tier that includes ads. So they're going to consider monetizing password sharing between households. And they're going to reduce the amount of available programming in their library, focusing more on quality rather than quantity. Considering the fact that they don't have a whole lot on there that everybody else doesn't have, I just don't know how that's going to go. All right, moving on. We're going to move on about Piers Morgan because the next few stories include him, but I'm just going to revisit this story that he said that um, you basically what Harry said about protecting the queen is a joke <laughs> because he said Piers has shown a light on Duke's comments and branded them nonsense. You know, he's seen her once for 15 minutes in the last two years, which is absolutely true. Now, Piers said exactly what I said. What I've said previously, people are saying to peers, why don't you leave them alone? And he says they don't want to be left alone. The very last thing they want is to, you know, go to the Invictus Games and Megan's wearing ridiculous amounts of clothing and nobody writes about it. You're literally forced to write about it. Didn't I tell you guys that before? Like every single day they're putting themselves out there and then people are like, why are you writing about Harry and Megan all the time? My response is, they literally put themselves out there every day. There's something else. Like, what are you supposed to do? I think Dan Wooten said it best, and I'm quoting. There is a gross amount of commercialization of everything they do, and why do they need to go down that path of being paid for Netflix and Spotify? They have the deal with the bank. It feels like they never get enough for them. And where morals and ethics are concerned, they it goes flying out the window when there's dollar signs with these two. And I completely agree. 
So the reason I'm bringing that up is because Piers Morgan interviewed Trump. And apparently there was a big thing and Trump stormed off the stage. There was a, a whole thing happened. But before he did, Trump predicted to Piers Morgan that Prince Harry's marriage will end because Harry's whooped. He said Harry was being led around by the nose, which he is. Then he said, Harry is whipped. Do you know the expression? And um, Piers Morgan said, well, I'm familiar with the phrase. And uh, Trump said, well, I won't use the full expression, but Harry is whipped like no other person I think I've ever seen. <laughs> I completely agree. Trump went on to say he's not a fan of Megan. He wasn't since the beginning. And um, he thinks it's an embarrassment the way Harry's being led around. And he doesn't like the fact that Megan spoke badly of the queen, that uh, Trump really likes the queen. And he said, you know, he and the queen got along. She likes me. I like her. Yeah, I, I think, you know, in this particular instance, Trump is making perfect sense. That's it. Now, when asked if the title should be stripped, um, Trump immediately said, yes, they should be stripped. She said, that's the only thing I, I disagree with on the queen. That's the only thing. And if that's your choice, you know, to leave them there, that's fine. But the longer you have the titles, you know, I mean, Trump said, I think that Harry has been disrespectful to the country. It's a great country. And he believes that the stress of the company's exile is going to tear the couple apart with Harry eventually being tired of being henpecked. <laughs> like, so Trump says, I want to know what's going to happen when Harry decides he's had enough of being bossed around or when Megan decides that she likes some other guy better. I want to know what's going to happen to Harry then. You know, he says, I've been a good predictor, as you know. I've predicted almost everything. It'll end and it'll end bad. <laughs> it's like, and then Trump says, and I wonder if Harry's going to go back on his hands and knees to that beautiful city in London and say, please, you know, I, I, yeah, I think it'll be very interesting to see, to see what happens. All right, moving on. All right, you guys, on April 26th, a new book is dropping called The Palace Papers Inside the House of Windsor, The Truth and the Turmoil. And this book apparently gives bits of information on both Harry and Meghan and about other prominent royals, okay? And according to this book, Harry has been damaged by his parents' divorce and his mother's death. And his relationship with Charles was strained after Camilla entered the picture. Now, this is very interesting because according to this um, article, Megan was unwilling to accept her place in the family hierarchy. Even before the engagement, she seemed to think that everybody in the shared office of William and Kate was hers to call in. And um, Harry, meanwhile, they're saying, had visions of the two of them operating in the celebrity stratosphere like his mother did. And um, they're saying that they both were addicted to drama. One section in the book even brought up the couple's um, first joint appearance with uh, William and Kate, where Megan reportedly hogged the spotlight and just broke into spontaneous speeches whenever she wanted to. You know, the book goes on to talk about how Megan didn't like the royal duties, which made Harry less enthusiastic about his role, and that um, Megan did bully the palace staff, and she caused scenes with the wedding planning, and she wanted a future as a global ambassador and philanthropist, and the Sussexes weren't willing to wait until Megan was more established, so instead they decided to announce Megxit, hoping the royal family would support them. And instead, you know, they thought the royal family was going to be forced into saying, okay, what do you want? We're going to give you what you want. And instead, the palace let them go and stripped them of their privileges. And they said the reaction was they were absolutely stunned. I don't know why they would be stunned, but yeah. All right, moving on. All right, you guys, I can't lie. This next story really just shocked me to my core. I had no idea that when Harry went to the games that he was using it as a place to have a convention for his travelers company and better up and all of that. I was absolutely stunned that he used it in that fashion, but he did. So Sally Davey, who's the chief executive officer of Travelist, put up a tweet. Uh, first, Tess Longfield, who's the CMO, put up a tweet saying, what a joy to have been part of the first Travelist Global convening in The Hague. Yep. Then Sally Davey put up a tweet saying, 
wrapping up an incredible week. We're thrilled to welcome the powerhouse that is Expedia Group uh, to the Travelers family and have them join the fellow coalition partners of Booking.com and TripAdvisor. And they had their first global convening at the Invictus Games. So I don't know about you guys, but I don't use those websites. And this is exactly why. You know, supposedly they have all uh, work together and, you know, they're, they're all part of this whole thing. I want no part of this. Why does it not surprise me that Harry used the Invictus Games to work on his other companies and had a convention? He probably had Netflix pay for all of them. Absolutely disgusting. And let me just remind you that Travago was just fined $32.9 million for leading, misleading consumers. Apparently, the algorithm that was being used was pushing hotels paying the highest cost per click fee higher than highlighting the cheapest rates. Yeah, so they're scam artists. Don't use those sites, you guys. All right, moving on. I watch Padina. I don't know if you are aware of her. She's a YouTuber. She's fabulous. You guys should all subscribe to her. She actually interviewed Thomas Markle. Meghan Markle's father. And what came out in that interview, and you can watch it, but what came out in the interview was very simple. Number one, Meghan lied about the doors not working on her car, which I always suspected that that was a lie. And he confirmed that that was a lie. But the biggest thing that caught my attention was, oh, also I should add, she lied about the work study at school. He said he paid for her tuition completely in full and room and food and everything was included. And the only work she did was babysitting for some pocket money. She didn't have to, but she did. But the main thing that caught my attention was when Padina asked what happened with Harry, he said she spun a story to Harry about this poor upbringing and how hard her life has been and how she clawed her way to the top. And the only way she could maintain that with Harry was to get rid of the family. And that's what she did. Mr. Markle also said that Megan called him up and demanded that he somehow stop the other siblings from talking to the media. And Mr. Markle was like, they're in their 50s. What the heck was I supposed to do? And at which time Megan said, well, if you don't cut them off, I'm not talking to you anymore. And he was like, are you kidding? That apparently is what happened. And I believe him 100%. He has no reason to lie at any, at, you know, at this point. All right, before we go on, we're going to cover really quick that Prince William attended an Anzac wreath laying ceremony, which marks the anniversary of the start of the First World War landings. And it's also a National Day of Remembrance for Australia and New Zealand. Here's a little video to show you what went on. Now, after the ceremony, of course, William and Catherine went to church for the service. Here they are arriving. When the service ended, obviously they left. Uh, Kate got some beautiful yellow flowers. She's just so pretty. Um, but here's what really caught my attention, other than the fact that she's gorgeous and she's wearing a beautiful outfit, and she's wearing Diana's Pearl Drop earrings. Um, it's the brooch that a lot of people spied. I think they made a brooch family heirloom to pass on to the kids. How pretty. All right, ladies and gentlemen, and now that we've covered all of that, now, let's move back to Sophie and Edward on their tour. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the tour continues. Um, Sophie and Edward are in the Caribbean. I love the fact that they brought up that while Sophie looks fabulous, she doesn't overtake Edward. That's the whole point. 
she doesn't eclipse Edward, in other words, which I, I like that. She's, she's her own person, but he's supposed to be the lead and she's letting him be the lead. That's what you're supposed to do. Anyway, moving on. Now, Sophie and Edward went to church, to a church service to mark the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. And the dress she was wearing was 1,050 pounds, which is $1,337. Love the dress. So they were in St. Lucia, and it was the Holy Trinity Anglican Church. I hope I said that correctly. And of course, you have the obligatory photos. You can see they're arriving, and they're sitting in their pew. And people are comparing this dress, interestingly enough. And by the way, I do, I do love the dress on her. Very flattering. I love the design. But they're comparing her to Princess Diana, to a dress that Princess Diana wore, I have to be honest, I don't see the resemblance. I mean, I'm, you know, uh, yeah, I don't see it. So after Edward got up and gave whatever speech he was giving, it was time for them to move on. All right, I'm sure I'm not going to say this right. After church, they visited the Morn Fortune, which is a historical site and location of the tombs of St. Lucia's two noble, noble laureates. Um, and so they went there to pay their respects. You know, these are the kind of photos that make me say, on my next vacation, I think I'd like to go to St. Lucia. You know what I'm saying? I mean, look at the mountains in the background. Beautiful. But I probably won't go to St. Lucia because there's a radio host there asked how their benefits, how their visit was benefiting them. And he says, I want to know what the purpose of this visit is. I want to know who's paying for it. It's a guy named Mr. Flood who hosts a show called Tell It Like It Is on St. Lucian Radio. Now, he said, they're not really high up in the royal family, so how are they going to benefit us as a people? Let me tell you how they would have benefited you. They would have benefited you by showing what a fabulous place St. Lucia is and would make me want to go visit. But now, since you're, you know, behaving the way you are, I have no interest in spending any of my money on your island. There you go. So when you notice that your tourism dollars are dropping, now you know who to blame for it. All right, now let's go on to her, Sophie's outfit. So here's everything that she was wearing. And of course, like I told you before, the dress, I already priced it out. A little over a thousand pounds or $1,300. Then you have this absolutely beautiful purse. It's called a bean bag and it's 310 pounds or three hundred and ninety four dollars and finally you have the shoes and they cost six hundred and eight pounds or seven hundred and seventy five u.s dollars so she's really not over wearing ridiculously expensive clothing and i like that about her and i also like that she's reworn pieces like the sandals the other day she was wearing that she'd owned for years i like that shows sustainable fashion that's what i'm liking now to be fair i have to look at Catherine's clothing that she wore today as well. Just so you know, her coat was a rewear from Charlotte's Christening. The shoes are a rewear. The bag is a rewear. Uh, the only thing that's not a rewear are the gloves. Even her earrings, you know, belong to Princess Diana. I, I mean, again, sustainable fashion. And thank you to Remulade Sauce for the above photo. Well, ladies and gentlemen, once again, Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of information, and you know I want those comments. So feel free to put them out there. I'm dying to read them. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell to be notified of future uploads. If you've already hit the button, double check to make sure you are still subscribed. Don't forget you can follow me on Twitter. You can follow me on Getter. You can follow me on Rumble. You can email me. For those who have donated to my coffee fund, thank you so much. And as always, you guys, have a great day.